Wrestling fans and around the world, tonight we have a special show for you guys. This is WCC's Overload. Tonight, we got a special guest all the way from Los Angeles, California, representing the LCW family. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bobby Hollywood. Uh, yeah, hello. Um, my name is uh, Bobby Hollywood, and I'm, uh, I'm uh, real happy to be here, and I'm just, you know, happy to be part of the show, and, you know, it doesn't matter if I'm selling tickets or whatever, but uh, I'm just a real humble guy, and, you know, just all the fans know that I really care about, and if you believe that, then you're even dumber than I fucking think, my name is Bobby motherfucking Hollywood, and I represent Legion Championship Wrestling. All right. Although, I bet you didn't see that one fucker coming, huh? Uh, exactly. Right from the East Coast, my good boy, Mr. Sean Jones. Hey, WCC family, what is good? This is going to be an exciting night. I'm, I'm hyped, man. I'm, I'm really excited about this. And also, from the East Coast, Rock and Reese. Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? Yo, this East-West Connection's fixing to blow up tonight, so get ready because you're in for a treat, baby. All right, gentlemen, let's get down to business. Bobby Hollywood, all the way from LCW. So, Mr. Hollywood, break it down for us. What is LCW, and what are they all about? Uh, Legion Championship Wrestling is the most uprising, up-and-coming, up-in-your-face, all-up-in-your-dickhole fucking wrestling fed. Uh, we're doing it like nobody else does it. We're based out of Los Angeles, California. And, uh, yeah, you better buy this motherfucker's rookie card now, because after, after today, the price is not going to go down. I promise you that. Uh, oh. Sunday, we're, Sunday we're doing a show, Out of Control Part Two, uh, the Deuce. We're gonna we're gonna be rocking. It's gonna be at the Hall and Beck Youth Center. That's uh, uh, the address is two zero one five East First Los Angeles Street. That's Los Angeles, California. We was at the Casa de Mexicano. And uh, did you refer to your friend as my dear boy? Yes. I'm sorry, Sean. My bad. Yeah, that's yeah. What I, I was just thinking about that right now. Like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, 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 that was that, a botch. A, yeah, it was a botch. It was a botch. It's all right. Bad, bad botch. It's all right. Well, we, we, what, we, what we do at, at Legion is uh, we, uh, we specialize in the, uh, the best in Lucha Libre. And not just Lucha Libre, but death matches. For those of you who don't know what a death match is, come and see us on Sunday because we do it right. It's not like any of this other bullshit that you see somewhere else. You see the best in the Legion Championship Wrestling, you see guys like the BC Killer. You guys, you see guys like the uh, the Brothers DeRivco. You see guys like Supreme, we beat them. We beat guys like uh, Carnage, we beat them. Uh, we got guys like um, shit, Steve Payne. I mean, we got them all, man. We got everybody. We got the uh, the Mask Cabana, the Fine Fulibio, Coconut Sprinkled Asshole. <laughs> um, Sean, uh, I showed you a video of uh, Bobby Hollywood up in East LCW. Which, what are your thoughts about his... You know his work. Oh, um, it's awesome! It's it's off the hook for real. Like I I enjoyed it. Like let me let me tell you, the stuff that you gave me, I'm like, man, this is this is what wrestling. This is pro wrestling. This is the best hands down I've seen in months. You know I'm you know other cats. You know yeah they're good, but man I I love this 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 hardcore shit. This is this is beautiful. <laughs> Years ago, how long back do we do we have to go back? What was that? We started not too long ago. How how far did? Um, LCW started, I'd say like maybe like a, almost two years ago, right. something like that. So it's really not that old. I I think I've missed uh, I think I've missed like maybe like three or four shows, and then I've been working with them ever since. I fucking love working. The environment's amazing. Uh, right. everybody there is really fucking cool. You know what I mean? We got we got the older gentleman showing the younger gentleman the way. We got uh, me as the uh, you know personal representative, excuse me, <laughs> personal spokesperson for uh, the BC Killer and the brothers Derivko. Right. Yeah. I, I have immersed myself in Russian culture. Ah, there you go. There you go. I just drink more. Just basically just drinking vodka and having sex with blonde chicks. Not bad. Not bad. Shoot. Very uh, much it. Um, what got you into, you know, into the wrestling business? Um, 
Well, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you. I started wrestling in like, uh, Jesus, like 2002, maybe. But see, here's the deal. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't fucking say. Well, I got 15 years in the game. No, I don't do that. Um, I, I had some friends of mine who was doing backyard wrestling. You know, they were they were you know doing backyard wrestling, and I went to one of the shows and I said to myself, you know, man, shit. I could fucking do way better than these guys. So I just started. I said, "Fuck!" It. I started wrestling. Right. And um, I was I was already like, I think I was like eighteen or nineteen at the time. And uh, yeah, I, I, but sometime between here and there, I decided to get a little bit of training, mm-hmm. and uh, actually start doing professional shows. So yeah. Uh, speaking of professional shows, which one was your first professional show? My first professional show was uh, Epic War, uh, Epic Pro Wrestling War. Right. Um, I don't think they had the word pro. I think it's just epic, epic war. I, I don't remember. But yeah, I think that was in a uh, shit like '07. I uh, um, we uh, the promoter uh, the, is a guy by the name of Gary Yap. I don't know if you guys know Gary is, but uh, yeah. that motherfucker. He's, he's a cool, cool, cool motherfucker, man. Uh, one of our, one of my personal friends passed on. And he ended up giving us a, a match, just you know, just to show us a little bit of pity on the backside. So we ended up, you know, doing actually pretty decent, and, and I, I was working with Gary for a long time after that. Gary's a cool, cool, cool motherfucker. He's actually the, I refer to him as the mad scientist of Southern California Wrestling. Not bad, not bad. So uh, what do you do? Let's get back to the LCW. Um, show coming up Sunday, August 26th at the Hollenbeck Youth Center. Of course. Hey. What are your connections with you and BC Killer? I mean, how did it all start? All right, well, look, it. I'm just going to tell you right now, uh, in the pro wrestling business, it's just like any other type of business. Um, to a certain extent, you have to know people. You have to have connections. You have to have, you know, people on your side and things like that. And, you know, my talent can only take me so far. You know, so simply put, when I, when I first started in the LCW, I was not getting the respect that I deserved. I actually gave the fans a chance to be, you know, for me to be a, 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 a baby face or whatever. So, you know, they, they decided to shit all over me, so I decided to shit all over them. Fuck it. And, 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 and I don't know why, and I always ask, I always ask the BC killers, I, I can't stand the fans. He loves them. I don't know why. I don't know what his deal is. He thinks, they're the great, he thinks the LCW fans are the best, and they're some of the most hardcore fans in SoCal right now. But, you know, simply put, they don't like me, so I, 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 I already don't like you and everybody that looks like you. <laughs> you know, so uh, I ended up becoming the uh, spokesperson for the BC Killer. We had a talk. We had to sit down and we said, well, you know, I can help you. You can help me scratch my back. I scratch your back and scratch each other, whatever. But anyways, uh, after that, you know, shoot, we've been we've been running a month for the past year. We've added the Russians, the, the Revco brothers, Sasha and Alexis, two of the baddest motherfuckers in Russia, imported. And I and, and and I know that uh, that you know we're gonna we're gonna make some fucking noise, and you're looking at the next tag team champions. Not bad. Sasha nope. and Alexis. All your fans out there listening up, going down Sunday, August 26th, calling back Youth Center in LA, tag team championship in a tournament. Now, is this gonna be a full tournament, or is this gonna be just a series of a tournament? It's gonna be like a like a prior tournament. Like it's gonna be like two. I think it's gonna be two different shows. The next show is going to be the the finals or whatever. Right. But uh, yeah, um, Sasha and Alexis have been uh, they they they've been doing that thing for a while. The LCW is the place where the magic happens. That's where we're gonna we're gonna take the gold. We're gonna add a little bit more gold, and you're gonna be looking at the tag team champions, and you might be looking at the heavyweight champion in the BC Killer. Why? Right. You know, and, and, and that's in the near future. Definitely, bank on it. Talk about the rest of the roster. You also. Got- like uh, uh, Damien Arsnick, uh, who else? Uh, Robbie Phoenix. You got those luchas. Who else is involved in this? Uh, let me think. We got Thunderwolf, as I like to call him, T.W. That's T.W. Uh, we got the B.C. Killer. He's the, he's he's the, the we be fucking fools up in the death matches. We've been doing it for over a year. Uh, let me see who else is in there. You mentioned Los Luchas. Joey Chaos is there. Uh. Let me think about that for a second. Shit, man. Uh, oh, we got we got the the hardcore uh, Homo Sapien Angel. For some reason, didn't call. He's scared because he doesn't want to 
lock horns with me verbally, <laughs> much like he didn't, much like he didn't last year at, 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 at Out of Control One when I challenged him and he didn't, and he, and he, and he backed up, and, and and he didn't, and he didn't let, he didn't let, uh, you know, uh, uh, his BFF take the take the beating. Oh wait, yeah, yeah, he did. So that, so that was that, that was really brave of him. Uh, other than that, uh, let me think. Jeez, Louise. You kind of caught me on the spot with this one, bro. I can't really think of anybody right now. Uh, shout out to all the shout out to all the the whole locker room in the LCW, by the way. Oh, there's a humongous locker room. That's not yeah, that's not everybody. Like I, I only named a couple. There's a humongous roster and a lot of guys with a lot of talent. Uh, the stat you got um, uh, Order sixty six, Bobby Phoenix, and uh, Damian Arsenic. Uh, we have uh, uh, Ray Rosas. We got. Um, Famous B. Oh, shit, I can't believe I didn't fucking think of Famous B. Famous B is a, Famous B is a cool, cool, cool motherfucker. And for those of you who do not know, look up Famous B. There you go. For everybody who has Facebook, don't forget to add Legion Champ Wrestling on Facebook. And also subscribe to their YouTube channel at Legion Champ Wrestling. And follow them on Twitter at LCW Pro Wrestling. For more information, keep up with their updates. They're on top of their game. Ladies and gentlemen, LCW has been dominating the local SoCal scene for the past year. I recommend you guys to go check out their show. As you said, Bobby Hollywood, are we looking at the next heavyweight champion? Are we looking at oh, the next? Me? Oh, okay. Look, at what, what I do is I'm I'm a publicist. I'm a spokesperson. I'm the I'm the I'm the guru, so to speak. I, I I'm not I'm not looking to be a champion right now. If if if, if it happens, yes, I'm not going to back down from a, from, from any fight. And 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 I always fucking win. But but what I'm trying to do right now is I would like to see the gold on on the heavy metal king, and that's that's the BC Killer. That's the one and only. He goes by many names. He's uh the the Colossus, the Rainmaker, the the bringer of rain, uh the fucking the Apex, the heavy metal king, the Storm Drainer. Yeah, he's 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 the man. And I really think that right now nobody can fuck with him. Nobody can fuck with him. And with the, with the Russians and me on this team, yeah, we're gonna put that gold around his waist real quick. The only, only the only thing is, they just gotta get a fucking belt together and, and, and put him in a match, and that's all that's all that is right there. Mr. Jones, hey. any questions for Bobby Hollywood? Yeah, actually, I do, Bobby. Okay, you talk about BC, uh, BC Killer. You know, I hear you talk about him. who can match up with BC Killer. Who can or can't? I'll tell you who can't match up for the past year. We've been running a fucking muck. Let me let me think about this for a second. Uh, Supreme, he he's gone. He we ran him out of fucking town, you know. And uh, let me think. Who else? Uh, oh, the BFF Amanda. We beat the shit out of him. Uh, let me think. Uh, everybody that has stepped in our way, Carnage, we set him on fire at the last show. I mean. All right. Let that be an exa- let that be an example, a good representation of what the fuck happens to you. You know, Pinky, Pinky Saint Remy. You know, we took his mask. I mean, in, in in Lucha Libre, there's nothing more embarrassing and there's nothing more humiliating than having your mask taken away from you. And 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 he got in my fuck, he got in my face. And, and 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 I let it go the first time, and the second time I didn't let it go. And, and you know now, now he's walking around without a fucking mask. Maurice. Questions for Bobby. Yeah. Uh, yeah, matter of fact, I was just, like, uh, wondering, like, um, where do you want to take LCW in this? Where do you guys want to take LCW in the future? Where do I want to take it? Yeah. Um, I'm more or less looking for LCW to take me places, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, the, the thing is, the thing is, uh, LCW has so many different components to it that I don't see it. I don't see it stopping at any point, at any moment. I don't, I can't, I couldn't, I couldn't sit here and tell you that. Cause I've been at some, some shows at some feds where it's like they're there and then they're not there next month. You know, and you don't hear from them for fucking uh, a year or whatever. I don't see that happening in LCW. I see them, I see them running regularly at least once a month. And and if they get big enough, they'd be able to run twice a month. If they, if, if, if they, if, if they could get that much bigger, Bobby, no, I, I don't, I don't see the money ending. Bobby, not to put you on the spot, but right now, let let us know which is the match of 
time, well, not, well, not of all time, but basically what match do you recommend for every person to go to YouTube right now and subscribe to Legion Champ Wrestling and look up right now? Right now, I would say let's go ahead and look up uh, the BC Killer versus Supreme. It happened last year at, uh, I think it happened at uh, Battle Lines or one of the, I think it was the January show. But you can check that one out. Oh, uh, right there. That's 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 a LCW show. Um, you could look up the LCW versus DNT show. That was Mars Olsen versus the BC Killer. Actually, Mars Olsen being sacrificed to our God by the BC Killer. And uh, and uh, uh, you can go ahead and check that one out. And 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 arguably, arguably, our match was the bloodiest match of that show. And there was a lot, and there was a bloody ass fucking match. Ours was the best. Ours was the, not the best. Ours was the bloodiest. Not bad, not bad. Uh, Bobby, do you got a, a Twitter that you want to plug real quick? No, I don't got a Twitter, but you can check me out on my Facebook page. That's uh, Bobby Hollywood at uh, Bobby Hollywood at Facebook. I, I feel like such a fag talking about Facebook, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah you can call me, and all, all all you bookers and promoters and whatnot. I, I'm I, I'm I'm real easy. Hit me up. Call me. Ladies and gentlemen, going down Sunday, August 26th at the Hollenbeck Youth Center, 2015, East First Street in Los Angeles, California, 90033. Tickets at $13 a piece. Bobby, we thank you for coming by, and good luck with everything. Good luck with LCW and your futures. No, thank you. Thank you. Check check, check me out. Check me out at Facebook, uh, dopedistribution.com, who the fuck is bobbyhollywood.com, and uh, yeah, bye. Ladies and gentlemen, Bobby Hollywood representing LCW. Thank him for coming by. Up next, we got a recap of Monday Night Raw and upcoming shows. Maurice, take away your thoughts on Monday Night Raw. Hey, hey. To be honest with you, Il, I'm going to kind of side with the majority of the crew and say, like, this Raw was not as memorable as it probably should have been. Hmm. But, yeah, outside of the Jericho, outside of Jericho and Ziggler, and then a uh, whole Cena, Punk, and Lawler promo at the end. Yeah, it wasn't really a whole lot that stood out to me. Oh my God! I mean, Monday Night Raw was a little blah. It was more. <laughs> I, I hate to say it, it was more of a SmackDown night than anything. Wow. But, uh... Well, well, see, this is what, like, everybody's been saying, especially if you do, like... Oh, well, this is, like, one of the people... Things, like, people have been saying about we're all going three hours. It's, like, you do... You do this for a pay-per-view, then you gotta turn around and do another three. Three, it's, like... Yeah, it's, like, two's even rough enough, but, like, three, it's, like, I understand, like, people, like, like, when they used to do TVs or whatever, they used to go, like, three, four, five hours in a day or whatever, but it was, like, yeah, eventually, this is what, like, wears out a lot of wrestlers. Oh, man. more. Hey, Sean, what you thought about the whole CM Punk thing? I mean, really, does he have to kick Lawler? You know what? We're looking at Mr. Pipe Bomb. Again? You know? Again, but but you know what? I I love I, I hate I hate to say it, but I love where they're taking Punk, and I love where Punk is taking himself. I mean, true enough. In order to get respect, you're going to have to take respect, and that's what CM Punk is doing. You don't see that in a lot of WWE superstars at all. So with Punk, for his actions, the way he needs respect because no one's not going to give it to him. Yeah, I actually agree with Punk on this one. Ouch. I mean, I got tired of watching Raw. This is getting boring, guys. Um, I don't know if you guys saw or posted it on WCC. For those of you got W, for those of you that got Facebook, make sure to go to facebook.com slash group slash Wrestling Commentary Central. Today I posted something about breaking news. Triple H could be the next CEO, not COO, CEO. Whether it be a true story or not, Maurice, what do you think about this? Could Triple H already be the head son, Hancho? 
Jr. With the way he's been going the last last couple of years, like I know there's been nights where he's actually run the show and like. Like Vince hasn't been as active as he has been, but um, yeah. The only way I'll I'll like see this full time is when I hear it. From, well, like I said, I actually like I just posted on the on your uh, post. I said, yeah, Vince will die first before he either steps down voluntarily or is forced out because, like I said, Vince is like one of those type of people that like he'll. Like he's he'll literally keep going till his dying breath, and he's not using that as a figure of speech. Mm. Well, well, here's the thing, and and the reason, and I I believe that this is true. Uh, Triple H may be the CEO and not anybody in the McMahon family. I mean, Vince wants to be a grandfather, right? And with with the fact that he was doing day to day operations, he he feels like you know okay. You know, I, I I I basically molded the WWE to where I needed to be, which isn't really that great right now. But to have Triple H running, I think it would be a good idea. I mean, the guy's been in the ring, you know, ring, and then behind the scenes, he's been in movies, he's been in different organizations to where or charities and stuff like that, where he knows where how to manage the money and the product, and if Triple H is smart, like he said he is. He will take the WWE to a different level than what it is right now. I mean, the qu- big question is this: Why isn't Shane taking over the spot? Now, I'm not hating on Triple H or anything, but why is Shane not taking over? Well, that that I can't really answer on that one. I mean, I can, but I, I want I. I, I Sorry, my words. I have no idea why Shane. Besides the fact that he's in China and in more movies or something like that, from what I've heard, from what I've heard. So. Maurice. Yeah, but uh well, for one, because yeah, cause for one, you know what I think? I think if as soon as Hunter, like Triple H, got involved with Stephanie, yeah, as soon as Paul. I should say, got involved with Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of canceled Shane out right there. Right. And it was like, yeah, because we all knew there was going to be like a struggle between Shane and Stephanie. And it was like, more or less likely, Shane would have probably wound up having uh, the majority say so. But because, but then as soon as like, and then as soon as the game uh, marries the billion dollar princess, yeah, that power shift kind of uh, disappeared. Wow. Now, now, here, now here's a, here's a question, and, and I I have no idea. Someone ran it past me. Someone's based. I don't know if it's false or not. They said Shane is not actually Vince's son. Wow! <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, uh, if that no, I would, is man, then I'm not a Hernandez for God's sakes. Now I'll tell you this right now. Um, whoever sa- whoever told you, uh, told that, yo, somebody should send Booker in a like field the field version of Booker T, not the house version, the <laughs> field version of Booker T. And like just, yo, just like Jack that fool silly man because. Tell me he did not just say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh damn. Tell me he did not just say that. <laughs> For real, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's what that's someone. So I'm like, get the hell out of here. Are you serious? <laughs> oh my lord. Um, guys, uh, what did you guys think about the whole situation with a number one contendership with uh, Caitlyn? I mean, that was a shocker of the night to me. Yeah. Um. Basically, what had happened was was that um, yeah, well, they just got, they was just reaching for straws because um, Beth wasn't there and whatnot, and since Eve and Caitlyn was kind of like the recent rivalry and whatever, 
I can kind of, I can kind of understand them making Caitlyn um, number one contender because now this gives like Eve a chance to like screw her over, but not, but like still like keep her power. Now that she like book a sister and whatnot, mm-hmm. but she'll like kind of screw her on the down low. I could, yeah. So I kind of see, I could kind of see how this is playing out a little bit. Mr. Jones, Caitlin, really? Mm. All I gotta say is fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I gotta say. Is fine. Gentlemen, moving on to Thursday Night Impact TNA, or whatever their name is called TNA Impact Impact TNA Wrestling Wrestling Matters. I don't know. Uh, can't believe it. Matters. I can't believe I'm actually going to say this, but are you guys excited to see Ace and Eight versus the old timers? I mean, Hogan and Sting. Oh, God. DNA. For life. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, 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 there's your answer, Sean. I'm doing it for you. <laughs> exactly, guys. Uh, and it's the opening match, by the way. Eight o'clock on the dot. Oh, oh it's, it's the opening match? Apparently. Oh, well, well, well I, guess, I guess it would be the opening match. I mean, they got to go back to the old folks home. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> oh, man. man. Yeah, not all, and it, like it's hard for me to say this because like I grew up a Hulkamaniac and a Stinger, so. But, yeah, I'm sorry, this is getting too much now. Even, and like I said, I I was a die, and I'm a diehard Stinger too. So, but it's like, Steve, your better days have uh, passed you by, my man. I'm sorry to say it. Sting should have retired after his match with Bobby Roode. He should have retired. <laughs> it's still I mean, it's a, did they? I'm, and I'm sorry, I didn't even catch up with Impact. Did they even find out who are the who who are the Ace of Eight? No, that's the thing. I mean, I guess they're gonna reveal this Thursday who in the hell they are. I mean, a lot of people are saying one of them is Wes. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Wes Bris- Briscoe. I believe I said it wrong, but. I, you know what? I found out. Well, I actually accidentally came across a page, a dirt sheet. I hate reading dirt sheets, but somebody told me that uh, Chris Masters was one, mm-hmm. Luke Gallows, and you know, who knows? You know. Mm-hmm. Maurice, your thoughts? Yeah, for the, I was getting some thoughts too, and it's like, um, Truth be told, I really want to, to a point, I want to find out who they are, just to, who who they are, who who's the head honcho, just to, like, get this done and over with. Because, yeah, because, like they said, James Storm was the, the leader at one point on the show. You know, I'm watching TNN, and, and Bobby Roode said, no, it's, it's James Storm, which, you know, now you look at it, James Storm could be a good leader for for a faction, right? You know, Bobby Roode did kind of like put it out there, and it may it made you go, hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know, it's usually like, oh, it's the smoking gun. Whoever's the first to accuse is usually the doer. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Roode was behind it. Now, I don't know if it was on WCC's uncensored show on Monday nights. After all, or if it was on WCC Radio, where someone claimed, what if, and I, this is a big what if, wink, wink, what if the hoaxer himself, Hulk Hogan, is behind all this crap? I'll be pissed as hell. Uh, yeah, I, I seem to remember that prediction. But um, I was like, hey, strange thing, who would have thought he was the third man when – um. NWO when the Outsiders was originally forming. Right. Yeah, that, yeah. Because, yeah, because technically he wasn't around like he wasn't around when uh, Chico showed up. Right. And I was like, 
Yeah, and it was like the obvious choice. Yeah, like I said, the obvious choice for me would have been Luger. Right. Take on that whole move. Because now for Luger to be the third man, because remember, he had defected like just uh, less than a year earlier. And remember, he actually got taken out of the match. Right. You know who I who I really think it could be? And this is just me, Jeff Jarrett. Why is that? Well, we haven't seen Mr. King of the Mountain in, like, forever now. Uh, you know, most people say, that, like, he's still in Mexico. Right. But I, yeah, I mean, plus, I seen, yeah, I plus face it. And I haven't, it's seen his fa- I haven't seen his face. I haven't seen his face at all. Now, Maurice, you said it's his company. Now, is he still affiliated with Sort of. Is it like a hidden, I mean, not a hidden partner, but a, a mystery, you know, investor? He's silent. Yeah, like he, he's, um, yeah, he's still like a um, silent partner in the group, even though, like, um, yeah, even though it has been reported that he does have some ownership of the company and whatever, but, um, I, but, the follow up on Sean's point, it's like, yeah, Jared needs some. Yeah, if you're gonna have Jared back on TV, you gotta have him in somewhat of a relevant role. And it's like being leader of Aces Eight could be one of those. Right. Could be one of those roles. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's that. Um, like I said, I would. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Hogan. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Sting. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Rude. Yeah, there's like a lot of people up in there's a lot of people it could wind up being. Hmm. Jones, tell me straight up, who would you like to see as a leader of Ace of Eights? That's if you're still watching TV instead of watching in J Well. Well, you know, after after watching, you know, L C W, you know you know, TNA is Basically, almost off the radar. But to answer your question, <laughs> who I like to see the the leader of Ace, James Storm. Why? He has that. He has that look. He has that 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 look of a of a leader of Ace of uh, Ace and Eight. I, I mean, I thought you were gonna say rednecks stick together, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, that would be great. I mean, if uh, you notice, he just did not take off his boots while he rolled around. Just saying. I mean, I would, I, I would like to see James Storm as, as a leader. As a leader. Not bad. Not bad. Oh my God! Are you guys ready for this? So. Edit. The biggest rumor going right now. That's right. When it comes to Claire's baby, AJ Styles, you are not the father. <laughs> Thank God. Maurice? Yeah. Take it away. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, to be truthful, I didn't gave up on this um, AJ baby did anything um, a while ago. As truth be told, I had a feeling that it wasn't, that AJ was not going to be the father. It is like, I would crack up if it was Daniels and Kazarian just for fun, but truth be told, I like really lost interest in it. Right. Mm-hmm. Mr. Jones, are you the father of Claire's baby? I ain't the daddy. All right. <laughs> Good. And we I'm going I'm to I'm do my dance too later, so. Huh. Yeah. We, you're hanging out there. Uh, just for the record, El, El Cibernético, no es papi. Nah, of course. <laughs> for the first time ever, I'll say, no hablo inglés. <laughs> <laughs> and though I wow. who would say, no hablo inglés, but still. Sure. That's about me. Is AJ the daddy? Thank God he's not. But thank God we're over. Up next, apparently SmackDown 
SmackDown, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be having a rematch, possibly. Alberto Del Rio. Wait, Alberto Del Rio versus Sheamus one more time. Are we tired of this or are we looking at a next champ? I'm tired of it. How many chances has Alberto had? I think well, more if you don't count, Christian, the, if you don't count the four times he's supposed to have a match, but his injury took him out, uh, ten. You had to go there, dude. You had to go there. <laughs> hey, he had to, hey, he was asking. Oh, man. You're right. He had, he had more chances than Christian when Christian went up against uh, or Randy. You know, Del Rio, you're my boy and everything. I love you and all, but God dang it. Like, you know, like they're saying in Spanish, ya estuvo, you know, that's it. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm about to say, if anything, if anything, if you want to keep Alberto in the championship picture, I'll say, yo, if, um, yo, have him and Ricardo, I know Ricardo would be like wrestling a little bit, yo, have him go after the tag belt. Right. I mean, it's pretty crazy. I mean, a lot of these people have been saying, you know, is it done? What's next? Del Rio, Sheamus, Orton, Wade is back. What are we going to do here? What exactly? Triple. Well, right now, I know they're going to be a fatal right four. It needs to be a fatal four. There hasn't been a fatal four match in, like, forever for, right. for a major title. I mean, all right, so Randy comes back. And, like, not even a month goes by. And it looks like this guy is probably next for a title shot. Would you agree or disagree? Well, he already knocked off, well, he already knocked off the real Monday night, so. Exactly. Plus, he gave Seamus the look. You're next. Well, yeah, hey, Randy well, was like, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, well, then again, it's like, well, we probably was going to say the same thing here, but it's like, you remember just before Randy got suspended, he and Sheamus was about to get into a little something, something like over the belt, too. Right. I don't know, guys. I mean, I hate to, you know, it's not that I hate to agree, <laughs> agree with Chris. I mean, don't get me wrong. Me and Chris, we're tight and all. But I try to look at Raw and, you know, see it from a positive side. Fuck, man. Like, is it just me or is it just wrestling? Is, well, let me quote, let me, let me, let me rephrase that. Is WWE's product dying already? It's, it's lying, it's dying a slow death. And the only thing that's keeping it even, I can't even say it, keeping it fresh is, is CM Punk. But, they need to do something. They need to. They need to sh- shake. You know what they haven't done in a while. They, they haven't sh- shook the foundation of that company yet. Right. You know they they donned away of the draft. They they smashed the the two brands together to make one gigantic super show. You mean you're not excited? The move that came too late. You mean you're not excited about the Super Show on Monday nights? Three hours? Oh, oh, three hours. They're not even doing a three hours. It's not, it's not the promos. Don't get me wrong. I like the promos. They're going to be for my point. But Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't WCW do that? Yes, and we saw what happened to them. Right. Matter oh. of fact, they three hours show. Oh, I'll tell you. Matter of fact, I'll tell you when it stopped. Finger poke a doom. Yes. Oh my god. Yeah. Right. But yeah, but for real though, like, like, see, here's the thing: WWE made two fatal mistakes, like, over the course of time. Which is one, which one, they should have went back to one company, like, about. 06 or 07, or maybe maybe even 08, because like when they were starting the week, because you were having people established on both on both shows now. As far as Raw and SmackDown, like when you're when you 
like between 04 and 05, yeah, you already had like a full set. Like maybe even 06. Like somewhere like between SummerSlam and Survivor, you could have put them rosters back together. And it was like you had everything set. You had your tag teams. You had your cruiserweight. Right. You had you had your um mid card and you had your main eventers. Right. There you should have started building in there like and then like for guys that were a little stuck little stuck or whatever until you had something, had them come out like and here's where you could have used your jobbers right here. And it was like boom, if you wanted to put everybody back at one, it was like have a couple people just go up against jobbers or whatever. Then then like um only have like one or two main events and it was like you could have balanced everybody and said, All right you could be on Raw one week, SmackDown the next, so you could have a nice balance. So that way, if you needed some more new stars to like help freshen things up, boom, you could have probably had somebody available. Right. Then mistake number two would have been would have actually um, came from mistake number one, because now once you had a solid enough roster. That where you could have, you could have your stars. Nails where you had your three-hour show come in, right. because now you got the extra hour. You can have more matches, or if you wanted, if you already had the guys to do them, you can add extended matches. Oh my god! I mean, wrestling is tripping me out. I mean. One minute, it's the hottest product, you know. I remember people used to tell me, why do you like wrestling? That shit's fake. That shit's scripted. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, I got two words for you. Suck it. Now it's like, uh, uh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's sad because look how, look how long and far wrestling has, has gone. I mean, uh, yeah, you, in the 80s, you know, it, it, was, it was something fresh coming out. You know, it started dying a little bit during, you know, 92, 93, and then it started picking up back in 96, you know, because there was so much controversy with the uh, uh, Montreal screw job. Right. And you had you had your NWL, your DX, you know. It wasn't PG. And your 316. So, yeah, and your 316. Yeah, I mean, it had, it had everything that – as a wrestling thing you wanted back then. And, you know, then it starts slowly, like, changing, you know, like passing the torch when when we came, when we got into the whole John Cena era. And and a, and a lot of it is based on politics, and and, and that's where it kills, kills the, uh, the sport. When you have politics, uh, some of the superstars not acting right, you know, going crazy. But mm-hmm. you know, I always try to find that silver lining in 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 this profession and in, in wrestling because mm-hmm. eventually somewhere somewhere down the road it's it's going to pick back up. We just gotta you know either hold our heads up or just say fuck it. And, exactly. and unfortunately, Sean, it's like unfortunately, you know, it's part of the issues like um between. Between WWE, between WCW, and between ECW, we like oversaturated. Yeah, like they oversaturated us with this whole with the whole hardcore revolution with um Bring It Edge and and um and like a little harder product to us than what we were accustomed to seeing back back in the eighties and stuff and like early nineties. And I think it was like that point of, wow, once this wore off, A, would we have anybody left to like when we need to transition back to a part? And then B, like if we, when we transition back, like what can we do to like still keep the product fresh? Because we knew we could, once the 
attitude era ended and once the hardcore revolution was done that was it there's there wasn't going to be a like a second thing because it was like if anybody else tried it, it is like oh yeah been there done that but now what we need is like this 21st century method of okay we can have your family oriented product but yet we can still like have our touches of edge here and there and like like we won't be attitude but we're not gonna exactly be a totally PG product either right well you know what and you know I'm feeling what you're saying but that's that's where you know where we cut where where we cut that pie that factor we have you know your fa- family friend friendly wrestling which is WWE and then you have you know your mediocre but good the TNA and then you have the the indies you know you have independent ones it's like uh like L- LCW like you know now with 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 all this happening you know with wrestling now we need as fans need to push I think as fans we need to push the product out we can't really look at you know guys like Vince or or Paul you know to you know help anymore because now it's now it's up to fans like us have we have to show like okay this is what we want this is what we need you know we're going to we're going to make our voices heard. You know, we had CM Punk try to do that, but obviously CM Punk stands for company man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, damn. Sean, I should have had you on like two, you know, if you thought of it like a week and a half ago when I did that whole little rave on Punk, man, I would have loved that line just now. <laughs> you can <laughs> Uh, but that's but that's but that's just me, you know. Um, I don't know how everybody else thinks, and I, I and I think you know, I think everybody just needs to like really show and voice out to to Vince to Dixie that this is ta- now it's our time. You guys need to hear us. Like this shit is not working. All right, I'll get... call you up on. Hold on, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, actually, and I just uh, wanted to follow up on on Sean real quick. It's just like, yo, know, not only do we need to make our voices heard to um them, we need to make our voices heard to everybody, whether it's whether it's your John Cena's, your AJ Styles, your Austin Aries, your CM Punks, mm-hmm. um, or whoever else is up there, or whoever else is like, guys, we need you to freshen up this prop. We need you to like not go through the motions anymore. <laughs> because more or less when we're watching you, that's kind of what we're seeing now. And quick. <laughs> uh, no, I'm like, and quickly, let's get that out of the way. I mean, because Maurice is right. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Maurice is just right. Let's just say that. <laughs> oh, man. All right, guys. Question of the night. Now, we all know Brock Lesnar is contract deal. But is there any, any, any fucking way that literally this is the last we see of Brock Lesnar? I don't think so. I don't think so. Brock is too much of a... Go ahead, Sean. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Brock, he... he I, I don't say he brings in money, but he does bring controversy because that whole thing with UFC and the WWE, I think there was just too much for him to just say, oh, I'll quit. Mm-hmm. You know? He made too much noise to try to say, oh, I'll quit. I'll do two matches, and that's it. Like, WWE will pay me this much money. I'll quit, you know, 
and I highly, highly even think that he'll go back to UFC because apparently he doesn't want to get hurt anymore. Mr. Encyclopedia himself, Maurice. Is this the last we see of Brock? <laughs> no, and uh, that man whose impression you just did is, is is one of the reasons why. Because I'm sorry, Brock and Paulie are both. Oh, you know, they're both. Um, yeah, they just both glory hounds. <laughs> what can I say? They need a spotlight like. Like no tomorrow, and to be truthful, there's still some business that Brock would like to uh, handle. I don't know what specifically it would be, as far as the WWE goes. But it's like, I think, I would think if anything, there'll be one final ultimate blow. I think if um before Brock before Brock's contract goes out. And and knowing Heyman like I do, it will probably be the same. It will probably be on the same wavelength, and that is to to not only physically, but but also emotionally destroy Vince McMahon. I think that will be the that will be the ultimate goal that Brock Lesnar will probably have right now. Mr. Jones. Because, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, because it was like, yo, you said you broke the spirit of the WWE when you bro- when you uh, beat Triple H last night. No, you want to do that? You got to go through Vince. <laughs> hmm. Mr. Jones, are you telling me that you are now a loyal subject to King Brock? Uh, I'm not a loyal team member of Brock. I'm just... I I really don't. Okay, and, and if Brock even hears this, <laughs> which I I don't know how it would or if he, hopefully he he does or don't. Like I'm scared. <laughs> My thing is this: Brock Lesnar needs to just quit wrestling. Need to quit doing whatever. Mm. Yeah, let let Paulie do what he wants to do. Brock basically he said his. He set his stone in in professional wrestling, whatever, you know. And let me tell you, Brock Lesnar is great. Yeah, right. Brock Lesnar's not that great. I'm sorry. That's how I feel about Brock. He basically, I feel he killed SummerSlam. Guys, is there anything else you guys want to bring up real quick before we go? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, realistically... Yeah, WWE, I don't know what y'all doing, but if I would say all this, and I said this even before you made the, even before y'all um, went three hours, but it's like, as soon as y'all made the announcement, I was like, y'all, please do not do this because y'all are heading towards where Nitro was heading. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I want to tell you this right now, be truthful. Yeah, wrestling has been too ingrained into me for like for like most of my life and it's like I do not want to see this like hit that downward spiral that it's to hit that ultimate downward spiral where it, it can't recover but if y'all do not fix something quick it's going to happen Mr. Jones uh, Mike is yours WWE needs to step up their game. The writers need to step up their game uh, before TNA actually overthrows them, which is, I don't know how that could happen, but it may happen if WWE does not shape up. Uh, you know, like, you know, Reese said, you know, I love this. Don't screw it up. Guys. Awesome show. I'd like to thank everybody who came by through. Starting off with the LCW boys. Uh, yes. Now, nah, hey, uh, LCW, it's do.
Out of Control 2. It's Sunday night. Yes. Out of Control. A tag Team Tournament. Round 1. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? 6 o'clock this, this, set, this Sunday night? Yeah, this uh, is August 26th, Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. at uh, 2015 East 1st Street, Los Angeles, California, 90033. Uh, I, I enjoy watching LCW. I think that's the hottest shit right now. Yeah, matter of fact, I just uh, I just joined them on Twitter, so and, and yeah, you know I'll what, what, be following up. And what's and, and LCW has has a lot of action, man. Let me tell you, you know the shit I seen on the YouTube channel. I didn't even turn on my PS3 the whole day. I just sat and watched with excitement. <laughs> like damn, like Jesus, like just, just sick. <laughs> Awesome. Well, oh. hey, is Al still here? Have we lost our I, 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 I think out of excitement. I think he's, I think he's, he's somewhere in this room. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, like, uh, I guess I'm, um, well, actually, we're still recording, actually, but, um, I guess I'll say I'll catch you guys, catch you, we'll catch everybody Saturday night for WCC Radio, uh, right. I, I'm hoping something interesting happens this week, because, well, we still, well, I don't think we're going to have a whole lot to talk about, to be truthful. <laughs> well, I mean, besides, you know, you still got TNA, and you got SmackDown, and, just for the rec and just for the record, on Monday's on Monday show, uh, Chris kind of kind of shocked me that I'm actually on his radar for the whole uh, fancy league. So, yeah, uh, yeah, we're yeah. There's there's still points to be made, bro. And and truth be told, I was like, I was gonna be honest, like um. I'm just gonna wish everybody on season five luck because. Like I said, I only see like two or three people really, like as far as wrestlers in both companies, like really standing out. And I was like, because we let's be real, we know Aries is gonna lose the belt, like if not at Bound for Glory, at No Surrender. We know Punk's losing the belt, so like if you got if you had the champions on already, bad move. You should have oh. Yeah, actually, I would have avoided them three like the plague. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but um, actually, actually, you know what? There is something I may want to promote Saturday because if we, yeah, because if uh, the rest of this week winds up going dead, you know, I feel like I'm just going to come up with a, a double rant. One Uh-oh. being, yeah, one being I'm going to take what we said about we as fans needing to express our voices and like trying to get WWE and Impact to improve their product and as far as maybe the indie scene and maybe like for the two of them to help improve the indie scene as well and then right. two and then two you know I'm just going to feel like you know a lot of people often wonder what does it take to be a success in wrestling and why certain people do wind up being this because yeah let's be honest it's kind of yeah because for the people that get bashed for it for being successful all the time it's kind of getting old and you know I feel like silencing some people this week so you know what yeah so guess what uh, yeah I want to take some of the disrespectful heat off of Chris and I'm like you know I'll t- yeah I'm going to take enough I'm gonna take another shot of disrespecting this Saturday, so 
<laughs> okay. Hmm. Hmm. Well, Sean, you feel like Sean, you feel like wrapping it up, bro? Just, yeah, I'll wrap it up. Uh, I'm, probably the, yeah, I, I I think he stepped out real quick. Uh, but I'll wrap it up. Thank you all for for listening. You know, catch us on WC, uh, WCC on Facebook and Twitter. And I'd like to say thank you again to LCW for stopping in, Bo- uh, Bobby uh, Hollywood. Hollywood. Thank you for, yeah, thank thank you so much for stopping in. To myself, this is Mr. Jones and Ellie. We're going to be signing out, and thank you, Reese, for for being here as well. All right. Hey. Oh, 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 oh. he showed up. <laughs> we had a blackout in Cali, by the way. <laughs> oh, Damn. wow! We, to, we yeah, because we already took care of. <laughs> yeah, we. Yeah, I was about to say, man, we was about to sign it. Yeah, we just signing out right now. So we were just like, signing out. <laughs> well, yeah, we already covered up. Yeah, we covered all the info and stuff. So, all right. But hey, really, I mean, sorry, LCW, we had a blackout in Cali. I don't know for those of you, you guys might know that's going down out here in LA. But before we go, and thank you guys for closing it out. But let's give that LCW information one more time before we go. Going down Sunday, August twenty sixth, six p.m. at the Hollenbeck Youth Center in downtown LA, of course. At 2015 East 1st Street in Los Angeles, California, of course. Tickets are on sale at $13 a piece. Going down, the first ever LCW Tag Team Championship will be on a tournament. Yes. yes. All right. And for those of you that got on Facebook, don't forget to add LCW at Legion Champ Wrestling. Also, subscribe to their YouTube channel at Legion Champ Wrestling. And follow them on Twitter at LCW Pro Wrestling. And since I didn't get to say goodbye, I'll say it again. My name is El Cibernetico, and we will see you next Tuesday night. For more information, call 760-569-7676, access code 200-446-POUND. Thank you, guys, and I'm sorry for that blackout. No problem. Peace out, everybody. Later. Good night.